Hello and welcome to Math in 5 Minutes with me, Ms. Wadzinski, where I break down math topics into simple, easy to understand explanations. Today's topic is special right triangles, and we will learn how to use the ratios created in special right triangles to solve for missing sides. So let's get started. There are two different types of special right triangles. There is a 45, 45, 90 special right triangle because those are the measures of the angles. And there is a 30, 60, 90 special right triangle. And each of these right triangles have specific relationships or ratios between the side lengths. So to start with the 45, 45, 90, we have two legs, which are both the exact same. So we can go ahead and call them A and A. They're the same. A is the length. Then our hypotenuse is the length of the legs, A, times the square root of two. And that is true every single time. So that's a shortcut we can use to solve for missing sides of this kind of right triangle. Now we also have a 30, 60, 90 triangle where we have one short leg with the length a, I'm just choosing a random variable here, and then relating the other two lengths, the longer leg would be a, or the short leg, times the square root of three, and the hypotenuse would be a, the shorter leg, times two. So you can see a lot of it depends on knowing the value of another side. So. We have these shortcuts right here, and these are gonna be very important. Every teacher teaches this differently. This is how I decided to use my explanations. So we have our 45, 45, 90 shortcuts right here, which you may wanna write down. And then we have our 30, 60, 90 shortcuts, which you also may wanna write down because it tells you how to find each of the missing sides depending on what information you're given. So let's go ahead and see some examples here and how this works. Okay, we're gonna start with the 45, 45, 90 triangles. So in this situation, we have the leg is five. The easiest place to start, of course, would be to find the other leg, which would be the same. So X needs to be five. Those two are the same, A and A. And then to find y or the hypotenuse, we have to remember that the hypotenuse is equal to the leg times the square root of two. So we would have five times the square root of two, which we can just write as five square root two. And that's it. In the second example, we're given the hypotenuse and the hypotenuse is 19 square root of two. So now we need to go backwards and get the leg lengths. So we have to use this shortcut right here. Each of the legs is equal to the hypotenuse divided by the square root of two. So we would set up our equation. X, I just chose this one, which is one of the legs, is equal to 19 square root of two divided by the square root of two. Well, luckily in this case, square root of two and square root of two cancel out. So we can go ahead and just say that X is equal to 19. And now since we know that X is equal to 19, if we were to try to find Y, it is the same. So that would make Y equal to 19 as well. Now we're gonna go ahead and take a look at some 30, 60, 90 triangles. I brought down the shortcuts for us to take a look at. So let's go ahead and start with the first one. We are given the hypotenuse of 22. So we can go ahead and we can either find the short leg or the long leg. But I can see that in this shortcut right there, we have to have the short leg. So you're going to want to get that first. That's a pretty typical rule. You're going to want to get the short leg before you get the long leg. So the short leg is equal to either the hypotenuse divided by two or the long leg divided by the square root of three. We have the hypotenuse, so we're going to use that one. So Y would be equal to 22, the hypotenuse divided by two which would make y equal to 11. And now that we have our short leg, we can go ahead and get the long leg because the short leg is um, multiplied by the square root of three to get the long leg. So we would take the short leg, which is 11. We would multiply it by the square root of three 
and our length would be 11 square root 3, leaving it in radical form. Okay, so it's all about using the correct shortcut here. Let's try one more. So in this case, we have the long leg, which is nine radical three. Now, like I said, most of the time you're, wanna go, you're going to want to go ahead and find the short leg first. So I'm gonna start with X. So the short leg is either the hypotenuse divided by two or the long leg divided by negative three. Since I have the long leg, I'm going to use that shortcut. So our equation would say X is equal to nine square root of three, which is the long leg divided by the square root of three. Again, luckily we can go ahead and cancel out the square roots to make this x equals 9. And then from there, if we want to find our hypotenuse, we use that shortcut. The hypotenuse is equal to the short leg times 2. Well, the short leg is equal to 9, so our hypotenuse is equal to 9 times 2, which would make it 18. Now that was definitely a very quick explanation of all of this. The most important thing for you to have written down are the shortcuts if this is how you choose to attack these problems. Take some time to familiarize yourself with these diagrams and the shortcuts will be easier to remember. And as always, happy learning.